Today we're back to power supplies. I went to a lot of trouble to buy this and I paid about three times over the odds for it for this demonstration. These were sold by Tandy, who of course were um, really the number one people for CB radios, uh, arguably. And when they first, when the CB became legal in 1981, November 1981, Tandys actually didn't do a suitable power supply, and they actually bought one in. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a Smart branded one. Anyway, about a year later, they brought their own Micron to one out, which was a regulated power supply. And these often turn up on eBay and the likes, and these are not a CB power supply. Now this was sold on eBay as a CB power supply, but it isn't. Now I've just checked the mains plug and there's a suitable fuse in there because as we all know people can end up putting 13 amp fuses and that's not really very useful. So I'll just plug this in. I'm sure the vendor's quite correct that it's working. Now this is a 12 volt, 2.5 amp power supply. It isn't regulated, so it isn't suitable for CB. So I'll just turn it round. It's a double insulated product, so <laughs> it's a two core cable, but it's a metal case. I'm not quite sure how that works, but it's obviously it's approved. So I'll just try and put our trusty cheap meter there. Now it's off load so it's 17 volts. So this will only become anywhere near 12 volts when it's on load. I'm going to open it up and you'll see, especially for those of you who know about electronics, as to why this isn't suitable for CB radios. Now our main business, as we've said several times, is in church pipe organ restoration. And there's no electronics in there normally. But some pipe organs do have electric action, so the air goes into the organ pipes instead of a direct mechanical air valve, which we call a pallet. It's done by a solenoid, so it's done electrically. And this kind of power supply is absolutely ideal as a bench power supply for testing organ things. Now inside here. you have a bridge rectifier, a capacitor, another capacitor and a resistor and the mains transformer so there's no regulation. So it's got a bit of smoothing to take the, uh, the ripple out of it but it has no electronics for smoothing and that's why these are not suitable for CB radios. The catalog number on the back of this is 229127C. I just seem to recall it was something like the 227000, which was the regulated one. But anyway, nevertheless, the correct regulated one, which looks identical, it says Micron to regulated 13.8 volt power supply. Um, so that's what you're looking for. So fast forward two days and some parts have arrived, hopefully to change these capacitors. RS components, I sometimes weep that for their back order system and these things come in these paper bags. These used to be printed with the words, this bag contains components that you have ordered. Well, you know, hey, wow. Didn't order chips, did I? So what we got here, we've got 1500 at 35 volts. We've got 4700 at 35 volts. I didn't actually need to upgrade 
the voltage on these capacitors it's fitted with 25 watt um, 25 volt components and that's quite alright because it's not a regulated power supply it's an, it's an unregulated power supply so it's never going to rise above about 17 volts but um, I must have been having a senior moment because obviously they cost slightly more and I didn't need to do that so we'll get those fitted and we will power it back up okay so we're now finished I've switched it back on and the offload voltage is 17.97 so this isn't a regulated power supply, so unless you've got a load on it, it's always going to be high. This is why you can't use them. This is one reason you can't use them on CBs. The other is there's only a bit of smoothing capacitors. Um, it's just too dirty a DC. You'll just get a nasty hum. So, first of all, the capacitors that have come out... In the I'm not going to test these. It'll probably work all right, but just as a precaution, I changed them. Now, the 4700 which came out... Um, has now been replaced uh, with one that size so you can see the size has diminished over the years and the ones I've put in are 105 degree rated rather than 85 degree rated and the 1500 that's come out and again you'll see there's quite a size difference so I've upped the voltage and I've upped the temperature so we're on 17.97 volts now I have the faith that this is going to drop so I'm going to put my 12 volt light bulb across it and and now it's dropped to 13.6 which of course is within the light bulb's capability. So there you are, it's a 2 amp power supply, unregulated and ideal for using on the workbench when you're doing electromechanical things but not with electronics. So don't be hoodwinked into buying one when it's sold because it looks the right shape and size of a CB power supply and of course Tandy's with the Micronta brand or Radio Shack in other countries um, you know you'd think oh it's a CB item well it isn't they do want this it looks the same but it does have the word regulated on it and I'll dig one out of stores one day and uh, we have got one and we'll do an overhaul on um, on the Micron to regulated CB power supply um, on at some point. The only thing I don't like it, about this is although it says it's double insulated which I I accept I would like to have seen it with an earth and that might be a worthwhile modification for people who uh, are paranoid about safety. The good point is that the on and off switch is double pole the fuse is on the secondary and so the transformer presumably has a thermal fuse protecting the primary because otherwise the only fuse on the mains input is in your mains plug. So there you have it, the Micronta 12 volt power supply from round about 1980 and it's the 22 917 9127 22 9127 C